And I'm going to tell you what. If we don't live right, we'll bring the wrath of God down upon us. Amen. And, uh, this study that I'm starting tonight, the paper that I've got, the only thing, I'll just give you this to show you what we're doing, what I want to do. Chapter, Daniel chapter 2 talks about an image we're going to talk about tonight. And Daniel chapter 4 talks about a tree. And then Daniel 7 talks about the four beasts. And Daniel 8 talks about all these kingdoms. <clears throat> and Revelation 13 talks about the dragon. And Revelation 17 talks about the woman, the beast. And I'll tell you what, we'll go through the whole Bible. That's just like I'll be reading Zechariah today about the, the four carpenters and the four horns and and all and everything, it all, it's one thing. What it is, it's all the kingdoms of the world, and it's the power of Satan right in the middle of all of it. Yeah. And you can see it all the way back to the garden. You know, you can look. I've always said this, if, if I was an artist, I would go all the way back to the garden, and I'd draw a picture of a, a serpent. And I'd bring him right on down through time, and I'd put all the heads of the kingdoms on that but when you look back at it, I can see a great big dragon with seven heads on it. And that's the old devil it's set. And, uh, but I, I know that everybody says this, you know, get scared when you start talking about Revelation, you start talking about Daniel, because there's so much junk that's taught. Mm -hmm. And I don't claim to know everything. I mean, I just, I know a little bit, and I try to share, share what I know, but I believe all the prophets but the same thing. Yeah. I believe all the, the, the prophets and the law, I believe it was all one message. The Lord showed me in a vision one time that, that all of it was the same. All them books were all the same. They all talked about the same thing. They might have talked about the day and the time they was living in, but there was a prophecy in their work that went beyond where they was at. Just like I've talked about uh, Solomon. He, yes, he was David's son, and he did build the natural temple. But David's son also built the temple of the Lord. That was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he was of the lineage of David. And when he was speaking about the temple being built, he was speaking about him coming in time. He came down through the lineage. And, and the Bible even follows how that he came down through the David. He, he came to the, he was Jesus. Or John said in Revelation, said, I'm the root and the offspring of David, the bright mm -hmm. and the morning star. He, he was in the beginning. He's in the end. He's in our midst. And we're somewhere right here in this right now. But the only thing, you need your Bibles tonight. Uh, mostly I just got some pictures here. And these pictures are not scriptural script, scriptures. In other words, I didn't get these pictures out of the Bible. I got them from different places. And what I'm trying to do is I'm, some people learn better if they can see what you're talking about. And I'm, that's what I am. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. And I'm trying to teach the church the best that I can so that you can grow with it. But uh, we're going to start out here. Uh, I'll get this paper in a little bit. But I'm going to try to work everything tonight. <laughs> so I back, have to back up with us back up. But we're going to start out and we're going to read Daniel, the first 27 verses. Okay? And if anybody's got a question or if you want to add something to what we're talking about, to start off, we've already read the first chapter. We've read how the Daniel, Meshach, and Shadrach, and Abednego, they got favor with the king. And, and they, they was all carried from their land of Israel. They was carried down to Babylon. And they was in favor with Nebuchadnezzar. And he made them rulers in the kingdom. And now it talks about they was among the wise men. But the story goes on. God knows all things. You know, and he knows everything that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But he said, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep broke from him. How I many have had dreams that troubled you? Have you ever had a dream and you couldn't remember that you really made you feel bad all day? I have. I've had dreams about things and I'd sit, and I couldn't remember that some, when I'd wake up I'd remember it, but as the day went on I'd forget it. And that would trouble me. And I know what he's talking about because this dream, he dreamed and then he, he didn't, when he got up, it really troubled his mind that he couldn't remember the dream. Mm -hmm. But it troubled him so much, he said, then the king commanded for all the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and, and the Chaldeans were to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream 
And my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king of Shadrach, the king in Shadrach, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show thee the interpretation. Show the interpretation. And the king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will make known unto me the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in peace. In other words, if you don't. If you if you don't make it known to me. And your houses shall be made of dumb hill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. In other words, that was a hard thing, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. How many times have people told dreams? They said, what do you think this dream means? Well, I'll tell you what. If somebody told me what the dream was and then told me the interpretation, I'd be in North Carolina. Believe it, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Amen. But the old king was smart. That's what he said. Verse 7. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. And the king answered and said, I know the certainty that ye would gain the time because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known to me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. That was a hard question, wasn't it? But if ye will not make known to me the dream, there, let me see. Ten. Verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things out of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. <clears throat> And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods. His <laughs> dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. He was serious about it, wasn't he? Sound it. <clears throat> and the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. See, Daniel was among the wise men, and they was going to die too. And Dan, then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Iraq, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone <laughs> forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. And he answered and said to Iraq, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? And Arach made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time that he would show the king the interpretation. In other words, give us some time here. Let us seek the Lord. Let, you know, he's the only one that can give some answer anyway. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. I think they was in one accord, don't you? Mm-hmm. That they should desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. You know, they had a great feat in front of them. In other words, we're going to die. You know, here we are, we've made it as wise men and rulers in the kingdom but you know we're no different than anybody else when it comes right down to it when it was time to, to call on God it was required of it verse 20 I think and Daniel answered and said blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his no, I went too far no, I didn't. and he changed the times and the seasons, and he removed kings, removeth kings, and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, 
who has given me wisdom and might, and hath made known to me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast made known, <coughs> made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went to Iraq, whom the king had ordained, to destroy the wise men of Babylon. And he went and said to him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Now, the Lord had given him an answer. I must have missed a verse up there. But the Lord gave him the interpretation. Now, just like I said, I just, this is a notes to start off this lesson. <laughs> and I'm just trying to show you that all these things that we're going to talk about down over the next few weeks, Lord willing, that we're all going to be talking about the same thing and how they all tie together. They all, the Lord's only got one vision. And it's the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, it's just like there's all kinds of teaching, all kinds of things. There's only one revelation. God's the one who has the answer. Yes. <laughs> but after he went to him, he said, Then I rock, brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. And the king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able to make known to me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise man, the astrologers, magicians and the soothsayers show to the king. But there is a God in heaven. But there is a God in heaven. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions upon thy head on thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into my mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secret maketh known unto thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes, they make, shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. So he was, he gave him the dream. He's going to give him the interpretation. He's going to tell him what the dream is, and he's going to give him the interpretation. But he makes it known to the king. He said, it's not any, by anything that I have. Because there's no wise man, there's nobody on earth that can give you these answers. But God, he's the one that's given. And there was a purpose that God gave it to us, because Nebuchadnezzar was in a place that he was over the people. And God was giving him the vision, whether he'd understand it or not, God would give him a vision to show him what was going to happen in the future. And as we can go on into the third chapter, you'll find out that he took it carnally and he went out and built a big image for himself. And that's just what people do today. When God, people start out, God gives them something, and then they take it and they start benefiting on it for themselves. That's the way the whole world is. Everything that's about God, it's all about making money. It's about how you can get gain. But I'll tell you what, I want my gain. I want I want to make it to heaven. I want, I want to make it. But uh, that's just like you think. Don't you think some of the maybe our president or people that's sitting in over us in law, and some of our people, Congress and Senate. Don't you think that God deals with their hearts to try to get them to do the right thing? I think He does. But I believe if their heart ain't right, they'll not understand. And they'll go on doing. God said he put it in their hearts to fulfill what his will is. And you know what? Whatever God's will is, that's what it's going to be. Yeah. But if, we're on, if we are honest before God and we seek the Lord, God will reveal to us the things that he's going to do so yeah. we can prepare for it. You remember the story of Abraham? Amen. God said, should we not reveal to Abraham what we're going about to do to Sodom, what we're going to do down there? They knew Abraham had a nephew down there and had family down there. 
Don't you believe that God <laughs> warned, gave it to Abraham so he could pray for Lot, that he could plead for the people of the city? He, he just didn't give it to him so he could go around and say, God showed me this and God showed me the other. But he gave it to him for a purpose. Everything yeah. that God does, he does for a he purpose. For sure. There's for something for us to do. All right. Verse 28. But he said, But there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Did I read that part? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Let's get down to it. Verse 31. All right, here we go. Verse 31. Thou, O king, saw us, and behold, a great image. And the great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Now this image here, I don't know if this is a, would have been anything like what he saw, but this is a great image. You know, and you can see it's got a head of gold and the shoulders and its arms of silver, and uh, its belly's of brass or bronze, and the legs are of iron. And the feet are part clay and part iron. What is? Why do you think that he showed that these king these? In other words, why does he start with gold and change it down through? Does anybody know? Did he need to tear down? Well, yeah, that's true. But gold is the strongest. Silver's a little weaker than that, and then brass is weaker than that. And when it gets down to iron, it's weaker. And then finally, when it gets down, it's iron mixed with clay, the potter's clay, and then it ain't gonna stick together. And it will, it'll make it easier to fall. But he's shown us that one kingdom is inferior to the other. But he went on, he said, I'm gonna start, he's 31 again. Thou, O king, saw us and behold a great image. And the great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. Verse 34 says, so Thou sawest, you saw this great image, thou sawest, till a stone was cut out. Without hands. What do you think a stone is? There you are. We can, find, we can have a Bible study on that. Go all the way through the Bible. He said, this is a stone that's sitting on the two builders. The same that come ahead of the corner. Neither is our salvation in any other. All right? I'm going to read the rest of it. Which smote the image upon the feet or clay, iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken together in pieces. In other words, this stone came out of heaven, and it spoke this image on the feet. Now, as we're going to go on here and read, this image here that Daniel's talking about, it's talking about kingdoms. It's talking about it, the kingdoms of the world. How that there was a Babylonian kingdom and how it was standing. It was the one that carried the house of God off and carried the jewels off and carried off the people. And this is the first one that's mentioned, which is King Nebuchadnezzar. It's a Babylonian kingdom. And it goes on here to tell us that he was the head of gold. And then there'll be another kingdom after him. And we can read in the Bible how the Medo Persia kingdom, remember, in uh, I believe it's the fifth chapter. Uh, Belshazzar, which was Nebuchadnezzar's son. How do you remember the writing on the wall? Well, anyway, they overthrew the kingdom. And the Medo Persian kingdom come in, and it ruled. I mean, it don't show that in the Bible, but as we read on, we'll find out that the Grecian kingdom was the next kingdom that came in that started out with Alexander the Great, and then it went all the way down through. There's a whole lot more we'll read as we go. And I'm just trying to give you. Some kind of idea of what we're talking about. Anybody got any questions? I'm probably getting the cart before the horse here. All right.
Believe it or not, I've got numbers on these things and I can't see them. <laughs> All right, verse, I'm going to read here. Thou sawest till the stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them in pieces. Then was the arm, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken into pieces to get all, all the kingdoms of the world. Now listen, and this, all this gold, silver, brass, and it became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. Now this is a threshing floor. I know we, a lot of us, we're not farmers, and we don't know a lot about what threshing floor is. Remember, David bought a threshing floor to build the house of the Lord. But that's up on top of the hill. You can see that circle. circle. And they got the wheat piled in the middle. And what they did is that's a threshing thing. He's pulling up the horse. But they spread the wheat or the, or the rye or whatever the kind of grain it was. They spread it out on the ground. And they'd run over it and keep running over it until the seeds would fall out of it on the bottom. And the wind had set it up, they built it up on the hill. When the wind would blow across there, it would blow all the shaft, it would blow all the leaves away. Just like corn, how we take corn, we keep the corn, we throw the husk away. That's the way wheat and rye, that's what, that's what he was, he's representing, saying these kingdoms, that's what it's going to be like. They're going to be like the threshing floor. They're going to be blown away. They're going to be in. Now, the Lord kind of set up the kingdom. This kingdom that smote this image on the feet. And they took down all kingdoms. Y'all with me? I just put this in here about the threshing floor. So you read the law about that in the Bible, about the threshing floor. Anybody got any questions about it? Can you picture in your mind? Well, it's just like. Uh, they even had a, a threshing tool, they called it, and they pulled it with oxen. And they dump their seed out and they just drag it like, a, like I kind of think when we was young, we used to take bed springs and put them on a ball field, drag them around to get up to the lake everything. Well, that's about what they're doing. They're just raking all the seeds off from them. And uh, that was a threshing tool. That's how they got their seed for the bread. They'd take them and take the seed and they'd grind it up, make flour out of it. All right. <coughs> now this stone that tore down all these kingdoms <coughs> goes on to this next verse, the verse the rest of number of uh, 35, it said, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and it filled the whole world. We had a Bible study here a while back in the book of Isaiah about the mountain of the Lord. You remember us teaching about that? You remember we were talking about this as a stone that was set in all of your builders, which is the same as become the head of the corner. It was a stone, and it started out as a stone. He said, Jesus was that stone. He came, he was the one who set up the kingdom. All these kingdoms of the world and all their great power, when he came, he took all their power away. He took everything away. And he said, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Now, this is the dream. Now we're going to tell you the interpretation. See, there's the golden, the image of his soul. Like I said, it's just something to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Verse 37. Thou, O king, art, the, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven hath he given them thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art the what? The what? The head of gold. You see that? Well, he was the king of Babylon. 
So Babylon is the head. That's what I'm showing you, this great image. It was all one, but every kingdom, it, it got lesser and lesser until it just, when Jesus came, he took it down. And all, the, all the nations of the world is going to fall. But his kingdom is going to be forever. How many believe that? Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to read that one again. 37. Thou, O king, art the king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowl of heaven have been given to thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. And thou art the head of gold. Verse 39, and he said, After thee shall rise another kingdom, inferior to thee. And you can see, it's the kingdom of silver. It's the meat of Persia king. Now you say, where do you get this meat of Persia king? As we go on over in the book of Daniel, he'll tell us what it is. He'll give us the interpretation of it. And I'm just taking you through there the way it is now, okay? Uh -huh. And he said, After thee shall there rise another kingdom, inferior. Inferior means less than. Okay? Inferior to thee. And another third kingdom that should, of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And that was the, the Grecian kingdom, but when it came to power, and everything that came got worse. It got weaker, but in the eyes of the people was great. They called Alexander the Great. He was the first one. He was the first horn in this in this kingdom. He was the greatest. <clears throat> Everybody say Amen. Amen. Everybody wait. How did he break them in you? Uh, How did he break those kingdoms in you? Yeah, but what I'm saying, what, when the Lord came in your life, he broke down all your kingdoms. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this is all about, it's a spiritual thing. Yeah. You think how great Rome was? They were as really something. They could beat him with a whip and tie him up and drive him Things spikes in his hand, they didn't know if they was getting ready to set him free. He was getting ready to raise from the dead. He was getting ready to conquer everything. The same thing with us. How many rulers are in, was in your life? How many, how many kingdoms that was handed down to you that was wrong? Man. How about that old nicotine god, Man. you know, that you burn incense to? And, and the kingdoms of the world. Now, naturally speaking, there's not a kingdom that stood. Rome stood about 400 years, and it gets down into the next part, into the legs. But what God's has shown us, as we go on, you're going to find out that the devil was in all the work that's coming down through time. Out of in every kingdom. I've studied a lot about these uh, kingdoms and how they came about, and how every one of them just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And there's a lot, when we get on over in Daniel and Revelation, we'll find out a lot of stuff that's not written here, but it's written somewhere else, and it kind of fills in the pieces. And that's the reason I'm trying to give you these papers and get your idea. We're just on the first thing. But God's book is a mystery. He spoke these things. and He, he revealed them to us. Some things was revealed, some things wasn't. Even Daniel, he, he, he fasted, and married fast for 21 days. He wanted to know the answer to the vision. He wanted to know. And you think about fasting 21 days, that's a hard fast. Yeah. But at the, after he fasted, you know, God gave him the answer. But you know what the Lord told him? He said, seal it up. He said, it's for the time of the end. And it's not time now. Then when different John came along, God opened it back up. But there was even some things that God revealed to John. He told him to seal it up. He, went to, he said, what the seven thunders uttered, he told him to seal it up. He said, it's not time. And there's a lot of stuff that's not been revealed. There's a lot of stuff that's already happened. We don't even know it because we, it hasn't been revealed to us. You're going to have to live holy for God to reveal his word to you. I'm going to have to live holy. And we can play church all we want to. You know, and I'm not saying you're playing church, but I'm just saying 
we can go to church every, every not miss a service, and there's a whole lot more to it than that. Yeah. There's some working to be done. The Holy Ghost needs to clean our lives up, and that's what He's doing. I don't care how great they was. Do you remember when they killed James of the sword? That old king, he, he reared up, and he like he was a great, and people called him God. You know, the Bible said the worms eat him up while he's sitting on, yeah. on his throne. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, you just look at people. I, I, I tell you what, it's an awful thing, but I watch people, and I, and I can't do nothing, but I can pray about it. And I'm just praying and hoping that they'll change, that they'll change their ways, because I know that they're heading for trouble. I know, sure as God's on the throne, that they're heading for trouble. Mm -hmm. Bad things are going to happen. And, and it does. It's because the Bible says the wrath of God is upon the children of disobedience. Yes. That's on all these kings, all these rulers. Bad things happen to them because they would not obey God. <coughs> God Almighty and Eternal. I thank you so much. It's like you take your feet. Your feet are what you stand on. You're either standing on the truth or you're standing on a lie. And the wheat, the chain, it's like the, uh, you know, that wind blowing away. And the Spirit of God will try things, and it'll take away what's false. Yep. You know, you stand, you're either standing on the rock, or you're standing, in, you're building your house in the sand. And it's not going to stand if you're building something false. That's the way you take out where, like Moses and the, the staff, and the, the false prophets, the sorcerers, they had their earth, but Moses ate theirs up. Truth was small on the rock. Yep. You tax them to the rock where it's standing, it's the weakest point. Because truth will always win. Yep. There's a scripture too. I can't just tell you where it's at right now. But probably you've all read it. Where it's talking about Jesus. He said this is a stone set not the builders. But the same has become the head of the corner. But he goes on to say that if, if you fall upon this stone. You'll be ground to powder. Mm -hmm. You'll be ground up. That's, you're in that kingdom. In that world. Alright let's go. Alright. And, and he said, verse 39, and after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee. First, and he said, another kingdom and a third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule, bear rule over all the earth. And he said, there'll be a fourth kingdom. It said that this kingdom says, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And his arm that breaketh all these shall he break in pieces and bricks. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, parts of the potter's clay and part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest an arm mixed with mighty clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of arm and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong. Partly broken. Wherein <coughs> thou sawest iron mixed with the marry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. That's, even in our day to day, people can't dwell together. People can't worship together. They can't be. They can't. They can't love one another. I mean. And, People, they, they say, I'm just like say, I'm a Christian, but then they hate their brother. Yeah. You know, they, they're be. not Christian. And that's just what I'm saying. And in the eyes of the world, in one place he said there's a wonderful and a horrible thing committed in the land. Mm -hmm. He said the prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and the people love to have it so. People want things that's wrong. They want bad things. People want you to, that's just like we was talking today. I can't remember who I was talking to about the doing funerals. People want you to come and tell them that their their family went to heaven. Yeah. They want you to tell them that. And, if, and I don't tell nobody that they went to heaven or not because I don't know. Yeah. That's not my job. I try to preach to the ones that's left behind. And usually I don't plan. I just go there and whatever God puts on my heart, that's what I try to preach. That way I can preach to people. Yeah, sometimes people might get upset with me. Some people might say, well, you don't have no love. But you know what? I want to speak what God does. I'm going to hit everybody in heaven, but the one who came down. What's worse, if you let if you don't if you don't warn people and tell them they're in trouble, it's like people want you to say they're up there in heaven, up there playing golf, <laughs> wheeling and wailing and the boys and all of them up there. I, I ain't got nothing. 
Children, it's not read your Bible. Bible don't say none of that stuff. The only one in heaven is the one who came down. Yep. All right. 44. <laughs> so what I've shown you is all these kingdoms, all these kingdoms is one. You know who ruled all of them? Who do you think ruled all these kingdoms? The worldly kingdoms? The devil. Yeah. The devil. Ain't in the Bible says he's transcend the power of the air. This is his kingdom. This is his world. I know that uh, we talk about Lucifer in Isaiah 14, about him being the devil. But it says he's the king of, he's a king of something. I don't know if it's Egypt or one of them's Edom. I mean, uh, the book. Uh, Tyrants, okay, so he's the king of tyrants. But we said, well, that's the devil. Yeah, but that, well, that spirit that was Lucifer, he was in the city of Tyrants over the city of Tyrants. That was that spirit. Daniel, when he went to see the vision, I know I'm uh, rattling, but when Daniel had revealed, the vision was revealed to him, he said, the angel said, I was coming to you. This is my words. He said, but the prince of Persia, he hindered me. From coming to you. Now that prince of Persia, that was Satan in the kingdom of Persia, because that was the time he was living. But he said, When I go back, I must fight with the king of Grecia, because that's the next power that's coming in. We gotta fight against everything. He said we're fighting against the powers of the principalities and powers and spiritual weakness in high places. And but when you when you start putting this together, it it goes all through the whole Bible and stuff. It starts building through your mind. All right. Where am I, folks? Forty-four. Forty-four. That's my marker. What? You're my marker. You see the kingdom? I love the picture. I'd like to get to a baptism like that. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> I couldn't put them in no baptistry there, could we, John? The kingdom of God is within you. That's the kingdom that he was setting up. That's the one that he came. All the kingdoms of the world have fallen down. But the kingdom that the Lord set up is that he overpowered all kingdoms, all powers. In the end, we're gonna run, we're gonna rule and reign. But now, right now, we're uh, we're in living in perilous times. <laughs> now I'm gonna read 44. It goes with this picture. Remember the stone that came down? Yeah. In doubt, in the, smoke the image on the feet. Now verse 44 said, "In the days of these kings, talking about these, that's all this power." In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Now I'll show you what that kingdom is. That's what Jesus came up. He, I was reading, in, if you read the introduction to the, the book of the Acts, when Luke was reading, he was talking about Theophilus. He was talking about how Jesus walked with them for 40 days and did all kinds of works and he taught them the things about the kingdom of God. He, that's when John the Baptist came to the kingdom of heaven is nigh and they, the kingdom of God is nigh. In other words, when they come, that's what they came preaching, that the kingdom was there. That's when he gave them the prayer. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. We're in the kingdom now. We're born again. We're in that kingdom. Yep. The law and the prophets was until John. After that, the kingdom is preached and men press into it. That's what we're getting into today. All right. 44. And in the days of these kings shall God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to another people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Did I answer your question for you okay? Okay. And understand what I'm talking about? Okay. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and they had break in pieces the arm, the brass, the clay, silver and gold, and 
great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. God hath given it to him. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel. And commanded that they should offer an oblation of sweet odors to him. And the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel set it to of the king. Well, that's a good story. But there's a whole lot in that story. It's just not a story. It's a revelation. And really, it's, it's just a tip. You're just getting started into it. Now, Lord willing, we'll go into the next time. We'll go into the third chapter. And it talks about, well, it's, it's talking about the fiery furnace. And, and then when we get in chapter four, it'll get right back in here. And start talking about the truth. Remember these... If you want to read ahead on these things, you read these two, four, seven, and eight, and they all go together. Well, one of them, a tree, that the ten. You all remember? Well, you remember how? The, I want you to always, when you read through, you remember about the ring of brass and the ring of wine, because when you hear, when you're going to be reading dreams and stories. It's like the tree that you're going to see. It's going to have a band of brass and a band of iron. Even though it gets cut down, or the kingdom, the old Nebuchadnezzar kingdom gets cut down. But it's sure to him again. After seven years, God gives him the kingdom back again. And it's the same story. But you know, even all this wisdom that we've learned from, been handed down for generations, Nebuchadnezzar still didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know really had the revelation on But he did have a testimony for God. <coughs> we'll find out later on. Anybody else got any questions or anything? <coughs>